Hi. In 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. We've all heard the poem. We all know the story. But what about the man? We've heard the lore. We've heard the myth. We know that in our time and by our standards, we would judge him a racist and an enslaver. But the truth is, according to his time, he was neither. They had slaves. It was a part of the custom, had been for centuries, and would unfortunately be for a few more centuries until finally we ended slavery in most of the Western European world and then in America with the Civil War. However, Columbus was an interesting man. He was obsessed with one idea, and that idea was to make it to the new world, actually to Asia. When he was around 14, we don't really know the ages in that day and time because unless you were recorded at your christening with the Catholic Church, people really didn't know if you had even been born or not. But we know that sometime around 14, he took his first seaside trip. His father was a wool merchant, so he had a lot of experience and understanding from his father about going on trade routes and traveling with ships and all the dangers that came with that in that time. And one of those big dangers was pirates. And another big danger was getting lost. They didn't have GPS on a telephone like we do now. And as he was traveling these trade routes and going up and down them, he began to realize that not only were there pirate pirates, but other countries such as England and France also pirated anything that might have come to Spain or any Spanish ship. In other words, once you were a ship on the ocean, you were fair game for anyone to try and come and get your stuff. There were also lots of secret coves and places like that that people would hide. And he began to get interested in the idea of mapping. And this kind of became his thing. He really liked to map things out. He began to make his own maps and he also began to study under the cartographers of his time. And believe it or not, most of those were Catholic priests. They were the ones who had the time and the money and took the time and effort to make the maps that they had. Now, Christopher Columbus was not what you may think. Even though in his time, there were some people who still believed the earth was flat, most people believed the earth was round. What they didn't know is that the earth was much bigger than they had thought. As he began to put all these pieces together, he came up with this idea that maybe if he sailed west, instead of north and south, up and down the coast, he could avoid the pirates, avoid the other countries, and find a quicker way to get to Asia to get the things that he needed. And the more he thought about this, and the more he mapped this out, and the more he consulted with other people, he became completely and totally convinced that this was the way to go. He also, because of the influence of the Catholic priest in his life, wanted to spread the gospel the good news, the stories of Jesus Christ to people who did not know them, which they knew at that time that most of Asia did not know the story of the Savior. And he wanted to share that. And yes, also he wanted fame and fortune because of course that's why you took the risk to go out on these ships into unknown places was so that you could be rewarded for those things. It became really a driving force in his life. He went to several kings. He went to the king of Portugal. He went to the king and queen of Spain. He was on his way to the French king. Most of the reasons that he was able to get to these kings and have talks with them was because he was able to, through the Catholic priest, they had influence. Well, at first, Isabella and Ferdinand, the king and queen of Spain, were not interested because they were trying to drive the Moors out of Spain. And finally, at the Battle of Granada, which, ironically enough, Columbus was there, they finally managed to get the last vestiges of the Moorish influence out of Spain and turn their attention to this new thing that was going around, which was called exploration. Now, the exploration was also driven by 
money and fame and fortune and things like that. It's also driven by spreading the gospel. This is important to remember that although it's not the gospel that we share today, it was still a gospel. It was the news of Jesus Christ, even if it was just through the Catholic Church or mostly through the Catholic Church. So he approached the king and queen again. And this time they said, yes, there is a rumor un unconfirmed that the Catholic Church also supported financially this quest of Christopher Columbus. So he gets the Santa, the Maria, the Santa, the um, Nina, and the Pinta, and he sets out across to the West to find his fortune, fame, and to spread the gospel. Now, there's a lot of rumor that he, that his, um, before he hit land, that his uh, crews were going to mutiny. But if you read the diaries and journals that the captains kept, uh, that wasn't actually true. They, they too wanted to find something. So if you've ever seen these ships or seen um, people who have made these ships, they're actually quite small. And it's amazing to think that they crossed the Atlantic in those ships because the Atlantic is not a peaceful ocean, as we well know from our history. I think they're not much bigger than a yacht. No, they're really not. <laughs> but eventually they did find land. There's a lot of confusion over which island he actually went to. But the first thing he did, as was normal in that time and place, was he planted a flag and declared the land for Spain. He also had some interaction with the native people who appeared to be accepting of him and his crew, so much so that he actually left some of his crew there on that first ship. But guess what? It wasn't Asia. There were no spices. There was no gold. There was just food and friendly people. So he had to go back to Spain. He had to tell them what he'd found. He, so he gathered what he could, took a few of the um, Native Americans, and sailed back across to let Ferdinand and Isabella know what he got. Well, they were intrigued. They thought maybe they had hit, he had hit some islands. So they actually financed three more trips. And in the fourth trip, we're pretty sure that he probably hit mainland South America. But in all that time, and in all that place, and even with that driven obsession that he had, he never actually got to Asia. And he never understood that he never got to Asia. He died around in his 60s, I believe, of a heart attack. And he was pretty wealthy by that time. But he, other than those four trips, he was never able to get anyone else to finance him nor did he ever really know or realize that he had actually found a whole new set of continents. So we should not judge Christopher Columbus by our time, but judge him by his time. And in his time, he was a successful explorer who opened up the world to what was the then known world. What does our Book of Mormon say about Christopher Columbus, Bryce? Well, in First Nephi, which is the first book in the Book of Mormon, it talks about how um, Nephi ends up having a vision, and he sees someone that the Lord um, kind of sent the Spirit upon him and encouraged him to pursue a course to find the Americas, which is where Nephi and his brethren ended up sailing to after they left Jerusalem. And so it's very interesting that that one little bit of prophecy is in the Book of Mormon and nowhere else in Scripture. And what's also interesting is in Second Nephi chapter 1 and also in the Book of Ether, with the brother of Jared, where they also came to the Americas, but they were told by the Lord that only those whom the Lord will deliver to that land will find it. And so it's interesting just because what I found was during like the eight or so years that Christopher Columbus was trying to get funding, 
he went to i think the king of portugal who was like king john and he actually ended up sending a voyage trying to get sail westward after columbus pitched the idea to him but they couldn't do it because they went to a different set of islands i think they went to like the azores islands they did. and then and then columbus went to the canary islands and s- basically started there and because the winds traveled differently columbus actually caught the wind that helped him move westward whereas the ones from portugal ended up hitting the reverse winds pushing them back to spain and back to portugal and it's interesting because when um like even though columbus like like you said he started around like the age of 14 he was also studying and read a lot about sailing and winds and everything and even though he was a learned individual what i found with a quote from him was where is it he said i have searched out and studied all kinds of texts with a hand but then he says like with a hand that could be felt the lord opened my mind to the fact that it would be possible to sail from here spain to the indies or asia and he opened my will to desire to accomplish the project so it's like even though he had understanding like temporal understanding of how it all worked he gave the finding or the will and the desire to go he gave it all to god because he knew like it was something that he just wanted him to do and that he felt like it was his calling he did and i i when i put when you put all this together you begin to think about the times in your life when the lord told you to do something and it ended up totally different in what you thought you were going mm-hmm. to get as you started down the path that you felt that the Lord had asked you to do. And I think that's exactly what happened with Columbus. He was a yeah. religious man and he, um, he talked about it a lot, you know, his, his, um, well, we call it an obsession, but we know he was being, you know, influenced by the Holy spirit. Yep. But I, you know, I do think to myself, was it, you know, the next, the spirit world before he realized what had really happened and what he had really gotten? Mm-hmm. Probably a lot of us are going to be in the next world before we realize what we did. <laughs> well, I would like, the thing that's, the thing to, that, to think about is, like, the Lord used his understanding to fulfill his purpose. Yes. Because he needed the Americas to be found at that time so that we can start everything else that moved forward in the Americas, the revolution and just the founding of America with the founding fathers, like he needed it to be found so that there were enough righteous people in the Americas in order for all that to happen. He had a plan. Heavenly Father had a plan. Mm -hmm. This was the beginning salvos. And that's not to say there weren't people that, like you've mentioned, that were already brought here, like the Jaredites and the Nephites and and maybe others we don't know about yet were yeah. sitting here. And this is... Well, we also... Yeah, I mean, we do know, like, there was another set of people who left, like, the Jerusalem area right. after the Nephites because they found them and they didn't have an understanding of God or because they didn't bring any records with them. Right. And so we do know that there were others that the Lord brought forward. And it's just cool knowing it's like only those that the Lord wanted to find this land found it. That's so true. And it's one of the important things that we're taught about America, because as we know, America was where mankind began. Even though everybody else thinks it's Africa, it was actually here. And yet, because we think of our country and the land of North and South America as the new world, we haven't really done much excavation or archaeological work here because we think all of it's over there instead of for it over here. Yeah. 
But then I do know, because like there's a lot of people where they talk about how with what excavation has been done, it's like, well, we don't have any physical evidence of the Book of Mormon, of any of the civilizations, of the cities. And part of things that helps me is like the Lord acts, wants us to act more on faith than he does on anything else. Well, they say that there's, like, there's not a lot of uh, evidence. However, it's interesting to me that in 1823, you know, Joseph was writing out of a, a, a book that was metal that had uh, symbols in it that had rings holding, holding plates. And we have seen those. They have been dug up. Not not the Book of Mormon, but I mean, all over South America. Mm -hmm. They have had those books with the rings that were, you know, written. So <clears throat> to me, that's evidence because, I mean, Joe Smith didn't know that in 1800. He didn't know. Nobody knew about those things. Yet they yeah. are evidence that has been dug up since then. That yes, there are those types of books. Yeah. But it's just cool though, because like to me, knowing how God works and how he wants us to just kind of follow his impressions, follow the things that we have been taught by prophets and apostles, it's like, and even the spiritual experience we receive personally, it's like we need to take those and just continue acting on faith. And I feel like that's a little bit what Columbus did because he studied religion. He studied um, just voyaging in general. And he kind of acted on faith off that one impression. I need to go to the Indies. I need to go to Asia. It's like, I don't know why. I don't know exactly how it's going to happen. But there was like um, what I found when I was like reading about him, there were some people who said like he didn't make a single mistake on his voyage. Like the direction he what took, like he only made from what I, what I read, he only made really two course, course corrections, mm -hmm. but they were both inspired because it shortened his trip. Right. That's so it's saying. like, and what I even read like the Holy Ghost, huh? <laughs> yeah. And he kept but two log books. One log book was the story of the trip <clears throat> and the physical things of the trip. And the other one was his spiritual mm -hmm. feelings about the trip and how he felt that he was led by God. And he did pray often. And what a treasure it is to have both sets of those log books. And we do. And it has been translated into English and you can read them. And it's um, kind of sad to me in a way that we, because of our feelings today about slavery and um, racism, that we, we neglect to understand, you know, the man behind the myth. So yeah. to speak. And what a, a incredibly um, spiritual person that he was and his trust in heavenly father that you know god is telling me to do this and the catholic priest and the cartographers that were mostly catholic priests had encouraged him to do so i mean he was encouraged all along the way candy you had a uh we don't know if it's really true or not the story about his father oh uh, um when he was on one of those ships and everything there's a story that i always heard about him his father was interested in sailing and finding, you know, safer the trade routes. routes and safer trade routes and mm -hmm. um, things like that. But he always told him, he said, um, look at the, the, where the sky meets the sea. That doesn't happen if it's um, only if one is round. That's why you get that, that thing across the lot one of them either they clash together or they there's going to be a division but if one if one meets the other then of course the world is round the sea is longer than we think and mm -hmm. that's what the sailors back then were saying and that i've always heard is what caught his attention that there had to be something else further 
out there is the way the the sun met the ocean <laughs> the sky met the ocean that's really cool and like all the little things that you find out on how the lord prepared him and like taught yeah. him so that he was ready to make that voyage he does he prepares all of us that way i think mm. and i think the thing that i was thinking about was just kind of going back to how his understanding of the world was limited he thought it was smaller and so it's like, well, he never actually made it to the Indies. So why would God tell him, go to the Indies or go to Asia when there was an entirely new world he was going to find? Like knowing that, why would he tell him? And, and the thing that has struck my thing is, like my thinking is, God will use our understanding to do what he needs to be done. And so for us as members of the church, Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, we believe we have the fullness of the gospel and we it's interesting because like when i think about it it's like the fullness of the gospel is sim is more simply the fact that we have all the ordinances that we need for salvation and not but like a lot of our teaching helps us to understand those ordinances but it doesn't necessarily mean that we're better than anyone else and so for those who don't have the fullness or in other religions, like God can still use them with their limited gospel understanding to better the lives of others. And he can help them come closer to Christ and like, and like just use their understanding to fulfill what he needs to be done. I've often thought why, why the Lord led him to the islands instead of directly to the continent and a thought occurred to me uh, <clears throat> is you know by then the Nephites and Lamanites had broke up into tribes mm. and we all know that um, along those coastal areas were many tribes in the continent and he could have met up with a uh, uh, a tribe that would have killed him off right then and nobody would have ever heard. Or he could have introduced a lot of um, diseases that could have wiped, totally wiped them out. But going to an island of friendly uh, natives was to kind of introduce both sections of the world a little bit at a time, you know, slowly. The Lord doesn't work in clashes i think but anyway that that always struck me as why he would do that why the lord would send him to there but then when i think about it all of his children are his children he certainly wouldn't yeah. want um he wouldn't want that to happen to columbus he was a religious man he he followed the holy spirit and um he certainly didn't want to devastate all of the um, Native Americans that were here. And that, although that did happen, it happened slowly and it happened, um, you know, when it wasn't Columbus, it was, it was some other, you know, Ferdinand and all those that blasted through. But um, I think if it had been followed by the spirit like Columbus, it would have mm. meshed better. And yeah. that's where the Lord was leading it. Yeah. It's my opinion, the, but something that is interesting though, from what I read when Columbus wrote about the um the natives that he did find and did have some sort of relationship with them, he wrote saying it's like it would be better for us to kind of express more love than by force it's like we need to we shouldn't be using force with them and then when they ended up did leaving some of the some of his crewmen there when they were starting to either explore or start sailing back to spain on that for first voyage when they returned they were all dead because there wasn't very friendly relationships going on afterwards and then even during some of his later 
voyages, Columbus started not being as friendly to some of the natives because they were trying to find things and for whatever other reasons. It was interesting like how he started to change as the boy more and more voyages started going and how he started to change from we need to be expressing love and started using force instead. It's really hard sometimes to remember that 1492 was a long time ago. Yeah. And the way the world worked back then was, you know, you um you might start with love, but if you had to show force, you weren't afraid to show force. And yeah. it was uh, a different mindset, a different way. And I think one of the most important things that I constantly emphasize um, as a student of history is please don't judge that time. Because I noticed when I was gathering my material, there's an awful lot out there that want to um make Columbus sound like he was really an awful person. And yeah. yes, in our day and in our standards, I would have to say, yes, he was racist. <laughs> and yes, he was an enslaver. <laughs> and yes, he did, you know, part of his... If he was born in 2023, <laughs> yes, he was. <laughs> <laughs> but because he was born in the time and place that he was, none of those things um, were really, you know, what they um, kind of follow. In fact, the the very fact that he thought of love, I always think was a response to the response he got when he landed on the island. Because yeah. they brought them food and they tried to communicate and there was no you know, universal translator. And I just try to imagine in my mind what that whole scenario was. What's interesting to me is he did leave those men behind and they were killed almost every single American, or I'm sorry, European settlement in the Americas at the beginning of this, usually they ended up dead or lost mm -hmm. forever, like the Roanoke people. Just, you just know, th th there was not this this idea that all the Native Americans were friendly and, and warm, and we just, you know, the Europeans just decimated them. It's just not and a that true relations story. didn't stay yeah. that way. I mean, you know, I mean, I'll um, start out that way either. Yeah, <laughs> we well, had it's in fossils uh, getting an argument about the milk shared cow's milk. <laughs> so, well, I mean, people 18, are painting 2030. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it's interesting too because, like, the natives from what I saw with that, my study was that they looked at the Europeans as if they were angels of, from heaven. And they wanted to sail with them original back to Spain because they thought they were going to take them to heaven. And thinking on it on how, like for us, like as members of the church, where in the Book of Mormon, Christ goes to the Americas after his resurrection, like they have an under they had an understanding of a white God coming to visit them. And Brandon, like my brother, he went down to Mexico, went to some of their temples when he was down there. And on their walls, they have drawings similar to what is depicted in the Book of Mormon of a white god coming down to visit them at their temples. And so them remembering and probably passing down that story from generation to generation, they probably see these white settlers coming and they're like, they are exactly like what we've been told. And so it's like, let's go with them. It's like, they can't stay here, but we can go with them. They did. And they did. Even Pocahontas it, went to England. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I was just kind of it. thinking about, yeah. I mean, I was thinking more of the Disney movie, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we, we kind of need to wrap this up because Zoom's going to. Yeah. Um, time is out here, but mm -hmm. uh, I think this is a good start about the fact that the emphasis here is like you said, the Lord was ready for America to be, shall we say, rediscovered. Yeah. He led a specific man on a specific mission to come here. And I think we should never lose sight of the fact that Columbus, we should always testify 
Columbus was driven by the Lord, by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Spirit. And even he testified of it too. And so remembering that he understood why he was called to go. Yes, he did. It's important to remember because that's that part is left out often. And they forget too that um, the Lord knew that they had a portion of the gospel and it had been lost over here. And yeah. believe it or not, half of I'd say well over half of his uh, motivation was to spread the gospel. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, what the Lord to bring expects the us to do. A new set of people to a land of promise. Yeah. Yeah. And he even said, like, with meeting the natives, like, they didn't really have an understanding. And they, like, it would only take maybe 40 individuals to help get them to be Christian if we have an interpreter. So it's like, okay. that was one of his main motivations. And, and it's real important nowadays because I see the same thing. We see the same thing. Uh, generation of our society breaking into tribes <laughs> and um you know and no and a loss or a loss or portion of things are being lost like you know character integrity and 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 just being honest with each other and yeah. even one another the holy spirit has not been able to touch a lot of people and i think that that um that that's important for our day to remember that that the lord's always here he's always influencing you and he will if you open your heart to him like columbus did you never know what one person can do <laughs> yeah and i also think the lot one of the last important things to remember is like we don't have to know everything for him to be for us to be an instrument in his hands because okay. columbus wasn't for sure and it's like mm-hmm none of us have a full understanding of all the mysteries of God or everything that he wants to reveal. It's like, but we can be an instrument despite the things we don't know. And one thing right along that line that I keep thinking of is at what time did Columbus close his mind? Cause he had it so set on Asia, you know, cause I feel like oh, I think he went point, back to Hollywood and <laughs> uh, got his mind clogged. The Lord would probably <laughs> have told him, you know, no, it's not really Asia. Here, Chris, <laughs> let's just, um, let yeah. me tell you about what's really going on here. But I do think yeah. that, uh, yeah, I think you're right. Sometimes we're led and we don't really know what the end result is going to be. Nope. I think it's been great. Okay. All right. Well, on to next time, right? Happy New Year. (laughs) Happy New Year. Bye. It's been a great start. Absolutely. Bye-bye. All right. See ya.